Hello everyone, welcome back to 45 Drives for another tech tip. You may remember some time ago, Doug and I were on here and we were talking about making more videos about the performance of our servers, and particularly our flash systems. So we've put some videos out about what you can do with our flash systems over the last little bit, but there's one really, really cool video that came out not long ago uh, from Mitch Hall. Today we are taking on part two, where we are going to benchmark the Ceph cluster that we built in the last video. Then we're going to tune it with a bunch of set tunings that we have available. And then we're going to re-benchmark it and see just how much performance gain we've had. Spoiler alert, there's going to be quite a bit. <laughs> Like I said in that video, Mitch was running benchmarks, doing tunings, and he took the system from here to here in performance. Now mind you, it's a 40 minute video, and it's pretty in the weeds technical stuff. But there's a lot of value in there that everyone should be able to hear exactly uh, what he did. So what we're talking about today is kind of an overview of the tuning steps he did, and we're hitting the high numbers. And if you like what we uh, lay out here today, I really do recommend you take the time to watch it. Mitch did a great job. So anyway, Let's get into uh, the summary. Shoot up. The main point to remember here is we're tuning a Ceph cluster, but really all he did at this stage was he tuned the systems. He, he had the Linux servers working to their tip top ability. And then so we can now tune Ceph after that. And that's coming in another video. So let's get into the tunings. What did he do? These things don't necessarily just apply to Ceph. They're good for any of your high performance storage servers. All right, so Mitch started in the network layer first. So he, what he did is he applied a low latency profile to the Mellanox uh, network cards we have in there. I think he was using 100 gig in the video. Yes, he definitely was using 100 gig. So he tuned that first using tools brought to you by Mellanox. So you've got fancy network cards in your systems go find scripts and tools that, they, that the manufacturers have. They often have something to help you there. Two, he then increased the network buffer size. So that way he can put more data payload through the thing and we can get higher throughput that way. So the next one he did here is he used Tuned ADM, which is a um, tool within Linux to apply various performance profiles. Right? So he used a low latency network profile as well there, so he applied that. And that sends a bunch of Linux sys control uh, values. If you've ever looked into it, there's a lot, and you're not really sure what they do. And that's what Tune ADM is for. It just handles it and applies a profile, and you don't have to worry about it. Really cool tool. The next thing he did was he disabled the um, CPU idle times. Now this is a good power saving feature that if a core isn't doing anything, it can kind of go to sleep and be idle. And that can effectively reduce the power consumption of the server a little bit. However, it takes time to wake it back up. And in the case of a high performance system like this, you want your cores ready to deliver at all times. Your money is better spent to get the performance rather than save the minuscule amount of power. So Mitch turns that off and the CPUs are ready and waiting to serve data and move it through the system. Next, what he did is he disabled the I.O. scheduler for the disks. So what that is, is the operating system has a uh, scheduler of how requests go into the disk. It's really there for hard drives and to handle the way they spin. When you're with NVMe, it's a whole different game. So you pretty much just can turn it off completely and just let Ceph bomb stuff in and out of the drives as fast as possible. So if you're using NVMe drives, you probably want to turn your I.O. scheduler off. <laughs> And the last one he did, a common one that everyone pretty much knows about, I think, is enabling jumbo frames. So what that is, is instead of 1500 MTU, it goes to 9000, and that way you can effectively put more data into one chuck and you get better network efficiency. So that's it, those were the six tunes he did. So did they work? That was the plan. It did work, it worked really well. We saw massive increases here. So. Um, for the sequential reads, the amount of data we can rip out of the server, this is very useful for video streaming, big data analytics, machine learning, stuff like that. We saw a 113% increase, increasing from 4.5 gigabytes a second to 10 gigabytes a second. Really, really good. 
when it came to the sequential write speeds, now things that would be super useful for data ingestion, logging, just really write intensive a lot of data flowing into the server quickly or the cluster of servers quickly. We saw an improvement from 3.7 gigabytes to 5.7 gigabytes, and that's an increase of about 50%. Pretty good. When it came to random I.O., um, so like how fast the system could respond to a request, more so about how much data it can ingest or be read from, they were able to double it on the writes at least, from 14.9 KIOPS to about 30 KIOPS. Now that's really useful for databases, email servers, any applications that perform really small uh, transactions that need to happen quickly. Now, interestingly enough, the reads decreased a little bit, but this goes to show you about tuning and testing, where sometimes something can help one side and not the other. But Mitch left that as a little bit of a, um, how you say, cliffhanger. So uh, he's gonna look further at that in the next video when he does a little more tuning on just the Ceph side. That's the summary. I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that and you wanna learn more, I really recommend you go watch Mitch's video. And if you want to tune your systems, hear from us, uh, or if you wanna buy a couple F-16s and build a cluster to power your organization, reach out to us, let us know, we'd love to help. So thanks for watching. Melonix, 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 Melonox. We have Melonix. Oh my god.